and welcome to the Trendsetters Productions Try to Bully Me Project. I'm your host, Tracy Palmer. Greetings, greetings, everybody. Hello. So today I'm going to um, take it back a little bit for the Try to Bully Me Project. Um, I believe that I need to speak to you about um, some statistics um, that I've shared with several schools and, you know, at several events. And when I'm speaking, I always talk about how important this is due to um, statistics and, you know, how bad it is in not just Michigan, but in America um, and the effects that it has on our young people and our um, our families, our homes, you know, at work and things of that nature. So um, I got into this project um, after one of my students for my Trendsetters Productions project uh, had come forward about being bullied and having anxiety and having a lot of problems going to school and making friends and things of that nature. And when she shared this uh, story with the rest of her peers, it turned out that a huge percentage of this class of about 32 to 40 kids uh, were experiencing either the same thing or experiencing some type of um, bullying or suicidal thoughts. And so I started to do my research, um, not just in the area of Michigan, but in all areas to see what um, was really going on and how bad it really was. And so what I discovered was that 3.2 million students are bullied every single year. And that's in America. Um, and so I thought, wow, look at those numbers. So what is, you know, what is that really really mean when you break down the numbers and what it basically means is that there are about one out of every four students in a classroom um that are a victim and we're talking about victims right now that are a victim of of this problem and so that basically means it's like a hundred and sixty thousand teens actually that skip school because they're afraid to go to school. And just just think of those numbers and think about like the percentages and how they've dropped as far as how many of our students graduate. Um, you know, uh, when you think about census and you think about numbers, um, how it has drastically dropped. Um, and so many people think that it's due to all these major things but I believe that if you tackle bullying, because again, bullying acts turn into criminal acts, which is one of those things that we don't even really think about. Um, and so these things, it's, it, it begins to be a domino effect when it's not taken care of. And you cannot just, you know, at the beginning of the school year when these kids are starting school and you're saying, you know, we, there's a zero tolerance for bullying, you know, and you don't actually back that up. You don't actually do anything when something happens. You wait until things are out of hand or things are physical or, you know, things are at to the point of no return that you feel like it's a problem instead of when you see a small problem, you take care of the small problem before it becomes big. And, you know, you take care of the, the victims, you take care of their mental, you take care of their mental health, you figure out, you know, the counseling or you figure out, you know, the the one on one sessions in school or you figure out what it is that's manifesting in their spirit to the point where their grades begin to drop or they begin to skip school or, you know, they begin to, you know, be reserved and want to be by themselves or they're sitting alone at lunch like, you know, everybody's just sitting around and they're watching, but nobody's actually doing anything. And and so that these numbers begin to increase and the percentages of you know students going on to the next grade and going to the next grade and being excited about actually going to school and being in class and being excited about their future and and, and their future careers and things of that nature we can't get them back you know we can't get them back once they're mentally gone we can't get them back and so you know what i want to do is i want to make sure that we are talking to them at the time where we can still get them back, where we can still say, hey, this your, your life does not end right here. You have so much purpose. Um, there is so much that you can and will do, you know, if we just if you just talk to me. 
or if you just make them, you know, just pour into them every day and make them feel like they're important, regardless of, you know, what their classmates may think or feel or say, um, because every single individual student deserves to be there. They deserve, you know, your attention. And I know that sometimes that gets very hard because of everything that's going on. If we're in 45 minute class and sometimes we're taking 30 minutes with discipline, it starts with the head and that, and that's just the truth. You know, it starts, you know, with, with administration and it starts, you know, with our principals and it starts with our teachers and, and, you know, things of that nature, but everybody needs some help. You know what I mean? So that means that everybody has to come together and that includes the parents. You know, how are you sending your kids to school? What are you saying to them when they're on their way to school? How are you pouring into them before their week begins? How are you pouring into them when they get in the car after school? Are you paying attention? And so all of these things play a, a huge factor in these numbers. 3.2 million. And we have to stop thinking that it's not our child because trust me, it can possibly be your child. And so you have to look at yourself and how you deal with situations at home, how you're talking to these kids, how you're sending them out into the world every single day. Um, when I started this project a few years back, Michigan was actually number one in the nation for the bullying issue, which is why I knew that I had to do something. Um, and you know, and I just want to give you like some of the signs, some of the signs that signs that you can recognize as a parent, as administration, as a teacher, as a principal, as a counselor. Um, and I'm sure some of you know, but I have to share this, you know, often depression, unexplained injuries, lost or destroyed belongings. And I know they come home with different stories, but you got to start looking into these things. Frequent faked illnesses, these headaches and these stomach aches that aren't actually really there. They don't want to go to school, you know, changes in eating habits, difficulty sleeping, declining grades. Once again, likes to be alone, lack of being social. When they're young, they, they, they're supposed to be excited about going to school, be excited about going to different classes, be excited out about meeting different people every single day. Self-destruction, you know, it is very popular and unfortunate that these kids are cutting themselves. Um, they're they're wrapping things around their neck, seeing if it will, you know, seeing if it if they can, you know, choke themselves and if they'll be able to come out of it. And it's unfortunately, some of them don't come back from that. Um, just different things like that that I that I've found um, thought and thoughts of suicide, which is you know when they get to the point of of no return. Um, can we rid ourselves of bullies? You know, I, I want to decline the numbers drastically, but the reality is that there will always be a bully. You know what I mean? There'll always be a bully. And my job is to make sure that your child is confident enough in themselves and loves themselves enough that when a bully does come, that they're able to, you know what I'm saying, deter their self from that spirit of neglect or pain or rejection um, that they're not, you know, they don't succumb to that. They don't, they don't feel like they need to be that person that's going to give in to the bully because, you, you know, a bully is a person too. They've either been bullied, they've been through something, uh, you know, that they feel like they need to become what they seem or become what they've been a victim of. Um, and so, you know, we have to create an environment of, of safety and, and discipline and positivity and growth and change, uh, a place of confidence and respect. And we have to get back to the basics of that. And so that's why I really wanted you to understand and know how real this problem is. And, you know, we, we have to do that together. It can't just take one person or two people and it doesn't you know, you can't do it from your couch complaining about what's going on. Like, you must take a stand. You know, you we have to take a stand. There is verbal, physical, mental, and cyberbullying. We know right now that cyberbullying is just really, really bad right now because, hey, that's where everybody is. Everybody shows up on social media. They're posting it. You know, they're talking about it. They're doing this or that. And, and they feel like they need to be validated, <laughs> you know, by, by, by likes. You know, and it's... It's um, it's very, very, very 
very unfortunate. And just know that, you know, bullies, they come in all shapes, sizes, colors, and genders. There's no exception to, to, to who they can be or what they can do. Um, and so, you know, parents, what, what can you do? Uh, you got to be willing to look at yourself. Again, I'm, I'm really big on um, you looking at yourself and knowing that you need to share some of your mistakes with your child and be okay in doing that. Um, you are your child's biggest influence. Believe it or not, you are. Uh, if you find out that your child is a bully, it is your job to reframe the focus and the narrative. Do not label them as a bully, but refer to them as having bullying behavior and then recognize that they need to change. You know, recognize they need to change. And sometimes you have to change in order for your child to change. Find out why. If it's not if it's not because of things that are going at home, you need to find out why and, and get to the bottom of that and, and get them some help. Like, stop thinking that you can handle things on your own. Like, it is okay to seek help. It is okay to seek help. Always know that. Take action. Um, and bullying actually have, you know, appropriate consequences. Like, there has to be a consequence. And it can't just be you saying that there will be a consequence. And then when something happens, there's no actual consequence because a child recognizes that, you know, and they will do, they will be, it will be repeated behavior that they're doing. So, and, and the biggest thing, don't support it. Don't support or encourage bullying behavior in your child because eventually they'll begin to bully you or eventually they just won't listen to you anymore. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, they will do something so much that it becomes who they are. And that is what we don't want. That is what we're trying to, that's what we're trying to stop. Okay. So, um, if your child is, a, is, is the victim, like, first of all, you can't be naive. Um, you have to definitely recognize, man, you know, my child is, is, is in trouble mentally. Um, you got to talk to your kids. You got to make the time. Um, I know as parents, we, we actually have, you know, busy schedules sometimes. We got a lot going on. We're doing a lot. But you have to make the time. Report it. Report it. Report it. Report it. Report it. I can't say it enough. It's not being a tattletale. It's saving a life. And that's how you have to look at it. And that's what you need to tell your child if they're witnessing this at school like report it keep telling them report it like and and sometimes if you're a friend to a friend that's a bully sometimes you have to say you wrong you know what i'm saying if you can't be my friend if you can't tell me that i'm wrong and that's that's just the way it should be you know um and if if your child has gotten to the point where they need some some outside help counseling coaching support groups whatever get the help Get the help. I assure you that the help is available. And don't be ashamed to save save your child. It's your responsibility. So and you, you, you have to pour into your child every day. Um and 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 you you will 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 reap the benefits. Their life will change from that. Your life will change from that. Um and we'll always, always, always on our uh, Facebook Try to Bully page, we'll always have these numbers available right here. We'll always have all those numbers available. So this, you know, suicide, bullying, self-harm, sexual assault, grief, support, depression, drug and alcohol, eating disorder, mental health and abuse. So we'll have all those numbers available for you on the Try to Bully Me page on Facebook. And so I just want to talk to you like um, as an individual, I know there's always a lot of questions about Tracy Palmer and what does she do to cleanse her mind, her soul and her spirit and I always refer back to uh, and get back to the basics of the writing. Um, you know, on a personal note, you know how Father's Day just passed. And this was my second Father's Day without my father. And that is hard. Um, and, and it's crazy because we think that these things that, that we can do on our own and get through by ourselves or we can, you know what I'm saying, just keep it moving. It's actually something that's still manifesting in your spirit and you still actually need to get that out. So if you don't want to talk to them about anybody, like I'm big, <laughs> I'm big on write it down, write it, write it down. Um, you know, I'm 45 years old. 
um and you know i just lost my father and it's still just as hard as if i lost him if i was you know six or seven years old and and there were some things once the pen hit the paper and i started writing there were some things I was still angry about there were some things that you know some resentment some anxiety about some things that happened over all those years and it's healing it's very very healing to be able to get it out and at the end of the day i wasn't as sad like when i finished writing on father's day i wasn't as sad when i finished writing i was just like okay and then i looked up and i was like you know happy father's day dad you know i love you and now i love him and i miss him so much but it helped me to write it down it helped so much and and you you have to know for yourself like if you can't deal with the things that are going on inside you got to get help it's okay to get help black women black men um caucasian men and women <clears throat> latina mexican whatever whatever ever color sex gender religion it doesn't matter it doesn't matter like getting help and helping other people is why we're here it's it's why we're here it's how it's how we heal um and it's how we can save our country and so i just believe that you know i know we have our cell phones and we you know we do it big with all this technology but with a pen and a piece of paper there's there's a, there's a lot of healing in that and so i hope you take my advice and you know get back to the basics of um, total healing and healing yourself and looking at the numbers of these statistics and actually we're being a victim or being a bully or being a witness how those how we can change the dynamics of um our children um you know one child at a time and that will ultimately you know save our communities and save our homes um if we just reach out and and handle things when they're this big and not allow them to get so large that now we can't we can't get them back um and so that's why i want to share these numbers with you today um i'm really looking forward to having our next session with a you know we have a lot of people coming up that we're going to talk to and they're going to share their stories with you um and so i just thank you for listening today Please, please, please always remember that you can write me a letter at Trendsetters Productions, P.O. Box 771, Flint, Michigan, 48501. Please don't forget that. Uh, shout out to my partner, Hamilton Health uh, Community Care Network. Um, thank you so much for all of your help. Thank you to the Community Foundation of Greater Flint. Thank you so much to uh, Off Duty Productions. Thank you to my editor, Brianna Crystal. And thank you, thank you so much for everyone that's been watching, everyone that's been subscribing and listening. And please always, always continue to inspire.